Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you my favorite app for making YouTube videos besides Final Cut and Apple Motion. That app is called Pixelmator Pro. Now, originally I stumbled upon Pixelmator because I was looking for a non-subscription based alternative to Photoshop. And so I was looking around the app store and I found this awesome looking app called Pixelmator and I gave it a try. It turns out it is so much better than just a budget version of Photoshop. It integrates with Final Cut and Apple Motion in ways that Photoshop doesn't. And really I use it for every single video I make for YouTube. With that said, it is actually on sale right now. So if you're watching this video right as soon as it comes out, uh, make sure to go check out Pixelmator Pro and pick it up for 20 bucks. It's a crazy good deal for how amazing this app is at doing all of the stuff I ever needed from Photoshop plus more. As always, link in the description below. Now let's jump into the brand new feature in Pixelmator that's got me so excited. I've already got a 4K canvas set up as my default. If you don't, just come down here to the width and height and set that up and hit create. And you'll see we actually get something that looks really comfortable, especially if you've been working in Final Cut and Motion. Pixelmator does a great job of feeling like a Mac native app, which unlike Photoshop, it is. Let's zoom out our canvas a little bit. And what I like to do is I like to make a lot of uh, iPhone looking interfaces and animate them. And that's something that's really hard in Apple Motion because it just doesn't have good alignment or shape tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our rectangle tool and we're gonna pick a rounded rectangle. I'm just gonna round this up so it starts to look like that familiar messages bubble that we see in the iPhone text messaging app. I'm gonna drop some text down you can even use San Francisco, which is the built-in font on iOS. And hopefully you can see this is slowly starting to look like that little text message bubble that we see on iPhones. I'm just gonna change my text color to white here and I'm gonna change the background of the bubble to blue. Now so far, all of these things are features that Apple Motion actually has built in, but these next steps are where it really starts to feel like an advantage to have Pixelmator Pro. So if I select my text, one thing that I want to do is I want to make it aligned right in the center of the bubble. And you can see as I drag it, these little yellow indicators will give me page alignment and alignment with other shapes on the canvas, which is just an absolute game changer. You don't get that in motion. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to draw the little tail on the end of the bubble that you see on iOS. Again, you can do this in motion, but there's a part of this that you can't. I'm just going to click and drag out my little tail here. Once we have that looking as close as we can by freehanding it, I'm going to click in here and I'm going to reposition this. I'm going to hold option and drag on these control points to separate them so that they don't stay connected to each other. So we can get this nice sharp point at the end of the tail. Now this is the part that you really can't do in Apple Motion, is I would really like this to be all one shape and move and work together. So one of the things that you can do is I can zoom out here. I'm going to select the tail and the bubble, and I'm going to combine them into a single shape. Now you can see I've got these combine tools over here on the right. Now I can union them, I can subtract them, I can intersect them, or I can get the difference. Now you can see from these little icons the effect you're going to get when you can combine two shapes. We want them to be one shape altogether. So we're going to click Union and we're going to reposition our layers. And you can see it's already got this nice little group for us. I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to select both of these layers and I'm going to right click them to group them and now when you see I can position them I get this global canvas positioning marker so I know that my bubble is perfectly centered. Perfectly centered is reasonably easy in Apple Motion, depending on what you're working with. But if I had a different alignment that I was going for, this would be much harder. So again, another win for having Pixelmator in your tool belt. So now that we're done, we just come up here and we go File, Export, and we choose Apple Motion Project. Once it's exported, we can jump over to Apple Motion and edit it and start working with it right away. In Apple Motion, we'll just go File, Open, and navigate to wherever our project was saved. And you can see it looks exactly like our project over in Pixelmator. This group represents our entire Pixelmator project. And then you can see it also has our group with our text in our bubble and the alignment is exactly where we wanted. 
Now that we've got it in here, let's say that we wanted to do what the Messages app does and these little bubbles come sliding in from the bottom when somebody texts you. Well, we can just grab this group and we can directly apply a move behavior, for example. So we get this nice, smooth, ease in, ease out animation. Or if you really want to get fancy and leverage something that you can't do anywhere else, let's do the bouncing animation that you see from the text message bubbles in the iPhone app. I'm going to go ahead and select my group. I'm going to come over here to position and I'm going to click on this little arrow by the Y position. And I'm going to add a parameter behavior and I'm going to choose overshoot. Let's just go ahead and shorten that so it's a little bit of a faster animation. And then all we have to do is just turn that start value all the way down so it's off screen and hit play. And look at that nice bouncy bubble, feels nice and lively. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Your support means the world to me. We've got lots of good content coming up. If you would like to see how to make good use of Pixelmator to make and edit LUTs for your own footage, if you'd like to see how to make professional looking thumbnails for your YouTube videos, or if you wanna learn how to reproduce titles, transitions, or other effects using Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion, make sure to stick around. We've got lots of content coming your way. We'll see you next time, thanks.